What's wrong with you now? What do you mean, what's wrong with me now? You look like you got a little something on your mind. <laughs> I stay with something on my mind. Oh, geez. But I've been trying to practice oh, self-control. Geez. Really? Yeah, really. Okay. Self-control on what? Like, what are you trying to say? Kofi, how many times do I have to tell you when you get out of the shower? Why do you have to throw your wet towel on the bed? All you have to do is put it in the hamper. Inside of the hamper, but you leave it on the bed. No, 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 no I'm not finished. You complain no, about so many little things. But it's little to you, but it's not little to me. And then the other thing is that really annoys me and it really irritates me yeah. is that not only do you leave your towel on the bed, your wet towel, then when it's time to gather all your little clothes up, you gather them up. I said, put your clothes inside the dirty hamper. You don't even put them inside. You lay them on top. Like, what is the purpose? How you gonna keep complaining about these little? Th- do you know you do some stuff too? Yeah, that we That annoys all- me. You do stuff that annoys me. Like, like, okay, you talking about the bed? You leave your little cups of water or your little, you know, bottles of water. How come they only spill on my side? I got to wet the bed like I'm five years old again. It's because you left the water there. That annoys me, but I don't be bringing it up every five minutes with you. Yeah, but I don't leave it in the bed as much and as often as you leave them wet towels on the bed after you take a shower. And on top of that, it's not like we don't have a clothes hamper. Put the towels, put your clothes inside of the clothes hamper. Man, can you complain about something huge? Why you got to complain about but these little small things? But it's huge to me. Because you just like making double work. All you got to do is when you take, after you take your shower, put it inside the dirty hamper. Man. You petty. Okay, you petty petty too. You petty. Mm. Is that you? Did you see yourselves inside of our little skit? Well, we definitely saw ourselves (laughs) inside of that skit. Because that's a real scenario. Because that's a real scenario for us. (laughs) And so I ask you this evening, what is the scenario for you? Do you allow small things to build up until you become outrageously angry by your partner's actions? Hmm? Because it happens, doesn't it? Yes. Small annoyances become big things and big things become uh, the the death of your marriage. Mm -hmm. And so tonight we want you to stick around. We have some answers for you. Some things to avoid and some things to consider. Amen? Amen. That will strengthen your marriage and keep the little annoyances from becoming big things. To keep the pebbles in your life from becoming boulders. Amen? Amen. Because we all know that a boulder creates an avalanche. Or a pebble pebble turning into a boulder. When a small small snowball rolls Mm -hmm. into a big snowball and then it causes a what? avalanche don't let the avalanches come in your life in your marriage amen amen all right well let's get to it welcome 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 to inspired life ministries how you doing this evening ilm family welcome you know what time it is it is what time pastor marriage Marriage monday Monday. amen (laughs) marriage monday where we Open up the the word of God for some gems and some jewels so that you and I can get a better relationship with one another and a better uh, marriage. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. The definition of marriage we find this evening is what? A divine institution created by who? God. Ah, I like that. Whereby how many? Two. Free moral agents. Right? Male and female chooses to enter into a what? Covenant Covenant relationship. relationship. With With whom? An almighty God. An almighty God to do what? Stay Stay with with an an imperfect imperfect person. person. Amen. And so tonight we find uh, the avalanches in our lives. That is the total destruction of our marriages and our arguments that we have come from small annoyances. Yeah. Small Mm -hmm. pebbles. Things that may be small to you may be huge to your partner. That's right. Amen. 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 (laughs) Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Pastor Kofi. I hope you all have your Bibles and that you would go with us. We're in the New Testament. 
I'm going to um, interchange from the New King James translation to the Passion translation of okay. the Bible. Okay. And so I'm going to be reading 1 Corinthians, the New Testament, chapter 13, beginning at verse 4. And I'm going to do down to verse 8, but our key verse is going to be verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Uh -huh. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Mm. Is not puffed up. Yes. Five. Does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks mm -hmm. no evil. Yes. Verse six, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in but rejoices in truth. Mm. Bears all things, believes mm. all things, hopes all things, yes. endures all things. Love never fails, Talk but whether there are prophecies, they will fail. They will. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Mm -hmm. Where whether there is knowledge, it will will vanish away uh -huh. and so when we look at first corinthians 13 4 being our key verse the yes. passion translation says love is large and incredibly patient mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. love is gentle and consistently kind to all so we did that um for those who came and joined in um on time at 7 p.m we did a skit and yes. that skit is a real scenario um, in our marriage, right? Yeah. But yours might be that your husband drops his dirty socks at the foot of the bed every day mm -hmm. without fail. Mm -hmm. Or yours might be that she t leaves the cap off of the toothpaste. Yes. Or maybe he leaves the toilet seat up daily. Or mm -hmm. maybe she's texting and checking social media during mealtime, every mealtime. But there are pet peeves like these in our marriages uh -huh. that may seem like and probably are powerful to one of the spouse but certainly not boulders but if we're not careful they can grow to that right yes, yes. but if marriages if couples start stacking them up emotionally mm -hmm. you know what happens what? they easily turn into mountains they ah. easily turn into walls they easily turn into avalanche as you said in the yes, beginning annoyances can cause some couples to become separated mm -hmm. and even divorced my lord now Majoring on the minor is never a good practice for anyone, especially mm -hmm. for married couples. Mm. Am, I excellent? Am I saying ignore the pet peeves? No. If you um, were paying attention or followed along with us in the skip, um, Pastor Kofi said, what's wrong with you now? Well, I thought I had been practicing self-control mm -hmm. because I've been saying over and over and over again, hey, when you get out the shower, why don't you just put your towel in the clothes hamper? Yes. Like... You got to do it twice. You dry off, you lay it on the bed, mm -hmm. but then you got to pick it up from the bed and put it in the clothes hamper. Why mm -hmm. not when you finish with it, just drop it in the clothes hamper? And now, mind you, I have my reasons for it as well. <laughs> but not on top of the hamper, <laughs> right? Okay. Right. So that's tiring. Yeah. And oftentimes what happens is we fight about it. Yeah. Obviously not. We shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. But we have to find a way to work out our differences. Absolutely. Of course. If you think about the the example mm -hmm. of the husband leaving his socks on the floor, what's going to happen? They're going to pile up. Eventually, he's going to run out of socks. Mm -hmm. The room going to probably become not a pleasant smell, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, he could wash his own socks, right? Mm-hmm. And he could simply just drop the toilet lid without a word or without a lot of words. Mm -hmm. See, a husband could... She could do that, yeah. Yeah, she could do it and not yeah. say anything. Right. A husband could let his wife keep the cap off the toothpaste, no words exchanged, or he could join her in doing the same. Or he could just each time put the cap back on. Mm -hmm. and, and or he could yell about the phone, the misuse, you know... Well, he could hide her phone, but now that's kind of petty, right? Don't be touching no iPhone. Don't be touching no iPhone. <laughs> Maybe there's a better way. Yes. Small yes. annoyances may or may not alter marriage a marriage relationship. So Amen. That is so true. No, you good. Mm -hmm. You good, sweetheart. Amen. I was just saying part. So, but. Some might classify them mm -hmm. as little foxes. Ah. There's a scripture you want to um, yes. read the scripture past them. Yes, it is Song of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Song of Solomon, chapter number two. Listen to this, family. Verse number 15, it says, Take us, or take 
the foxes. Yes. The little foxes Come that on. spoil the vineyard of our vine. Yes. So it's saying there that the little foxes, Come on. you may think that they're little, but yeah. they have the potential yes. to destroy your whole vineyard. Yes. Because one of the concepts of a fox pastor is that a fox is known to be cagey. A fox is known to be smart. Mm -hmm. A fox is known to be crafty and, and cunning yeah. in its, uh, in its an, in inception of what it wants to do to the hen yes. or to the chicken coop or whatever that fox is trying to get. And so the concept is that some of the foxes that come about in our lives, the little things, mm -hmm. right? The little pebbles that seem to be uh, turning into boulders, they have an intent. And that intent is to break your marriage up. Yep, to ruin. You follow That's what right. I'm saying? Yes. They are the foxes. The pebbles are the foxes. Yes. That you that ruin the vineyard. Yes. The grapes that produce grape juice and wines is plenty until it's spoiled by the little thing. That's right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's a good um example. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. And so just to add to that piece with what you said is mm -hmm. that what happens is the foundation begins to crumble. Yeah. It's like the plants with the, the small foxes spoil the vineyard. The, the plants begin to decay. Uh -huh. So we need to deal with the little things because when we don't deal with the little things, they become more of an irritant to us. They become mm. more annoying to mm. us. But sometimes what I, I, I have found and learned, not in all cases, that sometimes it's the little things that irritate us. It's really because it's something deeper. Ah, I like that. That's true. Under the surface yeah. that we not dealt with. So it's just like if you have a bill and you're late with that bill uh -huh. and you duck in a, 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 a bill collector, bill collector yeah. thank you. Uh -huh. You're going to either deal with it now or you're going to deal with it later. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, your credit. yeah, you mm -hmm. need to deal with it because you don't want to what? Um, have a garnishment. When you go for that house, yeah, that creditor shows up. Right. Just things like that. And so we have to deal with the mm -hmm. small things even though we may not want to. So the, may I say this, Pastor? Yeah, absolutely. And just in relation to what you just said, in our skit, I said, you're being petty. Mm -hmm. And and some people, some of our couples may feel that if they do pay attention to the small things mm -hmm. and address the small things, that they're so petty mm -hmm. that they don't deserve to be addressed. Mm -hmm. So what do we say to them? Mm, that's a good question. You follow me? They, they, some people might feel like, well, if I just discuss the toilet seat or whatever you're saying is bothering you, that's petty. Mm -hmm. There's some bigger things like you paying the bills late or you right. coming in late every night and, you yeah. know, or what that looks like and all of those kinds of things. But here's what we're saying. Work at your marriage. Work at your relationship. Yeah. We're just explaining to you that even if you feel that it may be petty, it's small enough at the moment to look petty, but it's big enough to break up your marriage mm -hmm. and or I, your relationship. Yeah, and I really think that it depends on the, the maturity of the of the couple. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good good point, Pastor. So the passion, thank you, Pastor. The mm -hmm. passion translation of First Corinthians 13, 4, the mm -hmm. entire chapter of First Corinthians, it shows us that godly love is not a small commitment. Mm. It's not a selfish endeavor. It's not a rude behavior. Ah. It um it's a, sometimes it's an emotion or an iffy character trait, but love is large, mm, amen? And it does not retaliate. Love mm. does not retaliate, amen? Yeah. And with love, you have to be incredibly patient. What is patience? Another word is long-suffering, yes, right? Absolutely. Love doesn't fly off the handle with every minor irritation, nor does it retaliate mm. if the change is slow. Mm. So if you all remember in the skit, I said, like, look, basically, I just keep telling you, I've been trying to exercise self-control. Right. Well, right. why am I trying to exercise self-control? I'm trying to exercise self-control because you've been constantly doing it. I've been saying it for a while, mm -hmm. but now I'm just, like, bridling my tongue. I'm not saying anything, right, mm -hmm. because I'm getting in my prayer closet, but sometimes we want the results right then, but it's God's timing. Mm, that's a great point, there. Mm. Thank you. Oh. Love. It knows how to speak truth. Pay attention mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without angry accusations. Yes. See, a lot of times we do speak tr truth, but we're not speaking truth without the angry accusations. That's true. Godly love results in gentleness mm. and consistent kindness. 
Could we be so bold to say that it even knows how to build barriers, hallelujah, around healthy vineyards? My Lord. Maybe even trap those small foxes that spoil the vineyard before they even start digging? digging. Yes, hallelujah. Pastor, yes. We could give a number of ways to deal with pet peeves in a marriage, mm -hmm. but God already gave us one, and that's Corinthians chapter 13. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that if, as married couples, if we would commit to love large, yes, to love to love yes. great, to yes. love big, with yes. incredible patience, and yes. to invite God's supernatural love on, to invade Pastor. our relationships yes. and our marriages with gentleness and kindness, we would find the motivation to seek answers, and God would give wisdom right for the solutions. And God will give wisdom for the right solutions. Come on and give God a hand clap praise right there. Amen. Yes, amen. So talk amen. about your issues. Pray about them. But don't just pray about them together. Go in your own secret mm -hmm. closet, husband, mm -hmm. and pray mm -hmm. for the change that you want to see in your marriage. Amen. But starting yeah. with you first, right? Mm -hmm. Let each person examine their own self and yeah. start with yourself amen. amen and then give god the petitions and tell him the things that concern you because what concerns you concerns him amen, amen. feel the other hurt and when I say the others hurt, feel the hurt mm -hmm. of your spouse. Feel the embarrassment or the frustration, especially in bigger problems yes. than the ones mentioned above. Amen. Yes. Especially larger than the one of the skit that Pastor Kofi and I did. Yes. Remember that pet peeves can be indicators of deeper unresolved conflicts. Amen. So true. Give up. Give in, yes. give over, oh, yes. and give above what seems acceptable. Get help if needed. What is the yes. help? It might be therapy. Yes. It might be marital counseling. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Be an advocate for your marriage. Yes. Commit to each other to live and love larger than small irritations or foolish arguments. Your marriage is a covenant relationship that God gave to you. Mm. It's a relationship. It's a gift from God. And it's made for better things than that. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are the better things? It's made better for those little petty arguments. Mm -hmm. Better than allowing the foxes to come in and spoil the vineyard. Yes. Give space. Create space to your marriage mm -hmm. and let it grow better bigger with more love than you ever thought possible hallelujah. and remember to love large and be kind hallelujah. pastor kofi hallelujah well pastor thank you so much for allowing god to use you this evening amen thank you we pray that thank this you, message has inspired you i mean inspiration to stay with an imperfect yeah. person that's hard family just understand all of us including the bryants are in the boat of marriage yeah. and striving hard to stay committed to an imperfect person. Yes. You do that best by making a commitment to an almighty God. Yes. So you don't just commit to each other because if you only commit to each other, if you keep leaving the toilet seat up mm -hmm. or if you keep coming in late or whatever has been complained to you over the last six years or whatever time frame <laughs> that you're having it right in your relationship, Whatever that complaint, it has the potential to break up your marriage. Yeah. You follow me? So that's why you have to commit to God to stay with an imperfect person. You have to bring those matters to your Lord and Savior that's right. and allow him to give you the patience and the presence of mind to love 1 Corinthians 13, to love your partner yeah. through what they're doing. Amen? Amen. Let me ask you a question. Step a little closer to me for a second. How many marriages, including your mother, your father, your, your relatives, anybody in your family, have you known to break up? Isn't it time to fight for marriage? Yeah. Isn't it time for you not to duplicate the thing that you have seen done in your lives? The people that came before you who are now not together anymore because of the small foxes, because of the pebbles, that grew into boulders, mm -hmm. that spoiled their vineyard of their marriage. Hallelujah. Do not allow Amen. any fox, any pebble to grow into a boulder and destroy your vineyard you've worked very hard for. That's right. For you're the one that said, I do. You're the one paying the bills with the person. You're the one that's mm, having marital relations with that person and sharing and exchanging vows the way that you have deserves your commitment to stay in that relationship. 
Amen? Amen. Well, God has to be at the center of your relationship. So if he's not, let's take a moment to deal with that matter right now. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Lord and Savior and ask him to come into your heart and he will. Yes. Ask him to fill you full of his spirit and he will. Yes. And it will give you the power, the spirit, the well, Holy Spirit will give you the power to be in your marriage, right? To keep your commitment to God, yes. to stay Thank with that Lord. imperfect Thank person. You, Amen. Keeping in mind that you are not so perfect yourself and they have to make the same commitment to the same God to stay with the same person. Isn't that something? Yes. So tonight, make God at the center of your relationship and you will be fine. You believe me? I hope you do. We hope this message is in time is up. We thank you for yours. And always remember that ILM loves, loves you. you. But more importantly, God loves you. You know it. God bless you.